Now, this morning we started at real pace and we've actually covered a lot of ground. We wanted to start by setting out for you an international context, a helicopter view almost, and now we start zooming into the industry more specifically. And now we'd like to actually zoom into people. People, as Richard Solomons actually said this morning, people are very critical to our industry, of course. As much as we focus on the customer and what the customer needs, we need to focus on the people who are actually serving the customer. Now, you know of Domino's Pizzas, I'm sure. I'm sure you've seen mopeds delivering pizzas everywhere. But what you may be less familiar with is the fantastic work that the Domino's Pizza Group are doing with their people, mobilizing them, literally, for success. So to tell us more about this, please welcome the Chief Executive Officer of Domino's Pizza Group, Lance Batchelor. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, now we get on to the really important stuff. You've heard all about global macroeconomic trends. You've heard about Chinese tourism. You've heard about infrastructure development. All of this pales into insignificance with the two things that I'm going to talk to you about now. If my slides come up, here they are. Um, the first thing I'm going to talk to you about is great pizza, which I know keeps the engine turning. And the second thing I'm going to talk to you about is great people. Um, by the way, as well as being CEO of Domino's Pizza Group, I'm also a board director on the board of the National Gallery, which uh, attracts over 5 million people a year into Trafalgar Square. So I've got a, a double-headed interest, if you like, uh, in the whole sector. Let me um, just be indulgent for two or three minutes and tell you a little bit about Domino's Pizza Group, um, because what you may see is the corner store and the moped going by. And I just want to put in context what I'm going to talk about when I come to talk about our people in a moment. Uh, the brand, of course, originally originated in the US back in the 60s. Uh, after 10 or 15 years of dabbling with international, our US colleagues decided that the best way to make things happen uh, was to sell uh, the license to operate to local players around the world. And in the uh, 80s, the brand arrived in the UK, and in the early 90s was actually purchased by UK owners and has remained a UK-owned business ever since then, which is an important point that I want to leave you with. We are a British success story. We listed on AIM uh, in uh, 1999 and moved to the main market in 2008. And I'll tell you a little bit about what's happened along the way in a moment. Uh, in 2011, this great British company expanded into Germany uh, and in 2012 into Switzerland. And we have the rights to continue to expand into Austria and Luxembourg, for example. Um, since 1999, at the time of uh, Domino's uh, flotation in the UK, our sales have done this. Uh, and if you can't see the numbers from where you're sitting, at the time of flotation, we were doing about 60 million of turnover in the UK. Uh, last year, we posted about 600 million. Uh, so that's a 10x uh, multiplier in that period. Um, E-commerce is an incre increasingly important part of our business. We are an example of a business that has gone from being bricks and mortar to really a digital business, as you can see from this chart, which shows that about half of all of our sales are now transacted online, and that proportion continues to grow exponentially. Our profits uh, have more than mirrored the growth uh, in sales over that period. And again, if you have trouble seeing that, it's about one million back at the time of the float. Uh, last year, we posted a profit of about 45 million, and we continue to expand from that base. And the market has recognized that growth uh, with a market cap currently of about 1.1 billion pounds, which puts us at about number 200 in the FTSE. Now, that's numbers. And I'm not really up here to talk about numbers, but I did want to give you some sense of who we are and what the business is and where it sits and so on. We're not really here to talk about numbers. We're here to talk about the people who bring those numbers to life. Uh, Domino's Pizza Group operates something over 800 stores, most of them in the UK, many in the Republic of Ireland, and as I mentioned earlier on, expanding into Germany uh, and into Switzerland as well. The brand, and it's a franchise structure, the brand employs <coughs> over 24,000 people uh, in the UK, uh, which amuses me sometimes. I started my career in the Navy long ago, and more people go to work in a Domino's uniform every day now than go to work in a Royal Navy uniform. <laughs> which half of me is very proud and excited about, and the other half is really quite worried. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
we have about 120 franchisees in the UK um, who run all of our stores for us. We work very, very closely with them. Um, we provide the training, which I'm going to pick up on in a little bit in a minute. Uh, we provide the systems, the processes, the software, almost all of their raw materials. Uh, and it's very, very much a partnership. It is not a top-down structure at all. Some of those franchisees, as you will hear, have built really quite substantial businesses in their own right. Um, and uh, th they have become employers of great importance in their own right as well. And a point that's been made by a number of speakers earlier on this morning is the importance of regional development. And it won't surprise you, the majority, the vast majority of our stores are outside the London area, although we do have 200 or so within the M25. The, the employees and the franchisees are focused on two absolutely critical metrics. The first of those is around product quality, which is something that we're fanatical about and has seen us nicely through the downturn so far. An absolutely uh, rigid adherence to the highest possible product quality that you can achieve in a mass environment. Uh, and at the risk of boring you, um, fresh dough made every day, 100% mozzarella, the highest quality toppings that we can find anywhere in Europe uh, to put on top of the pizzas. Uh, they call it fast food, but it's very much customized. The second thing that we're extremely focused on is service. And we believe the thing that makes us absolutely different um, to many of our competitors is our obsession with service, the use of IT to improve that service whenever and wherever possible. And we've now got average delivery ta times down to something in the order of 23 minutes from when you click and I say click deliberately because last month 65% of all our deliveries came in uh, via online and apps and so on. Um, 23 minutes or so until you get your hot dinner. But it's all about the people and it's about the team members um, who have made this business a success. And what I want to do is just zoom in. I'm only up here for 10 minutes and I've got about three or four left. I'm going to zoom in um, just for the next two or three minutes on two individuals almost picked at random from the 24,000 uh, that we uh, employ in the UK. The first um, is a case study of a young lady by the name of Jen Price, who grew up down on the south coast. Uh, I don't know if you can read this, so I'm going to talk you through some of it. So Jen, uh, as she went through school, was absolutely clear that she did not want to spend her life in an office. She wanted to be out and about, dealing with people uh, in a high-energy environment where things actually happened. She joined us uh, as a manager in training um, in 2008, when she was still in her teens, I think. Uh, and was immediately recognized by her own store manager as a highly talented, very high energy, very creative individual. Uh, she, she was put on internal training courses within the franchisee. And many of our franchisees do run some of their own training. Uh, and then when she continued to excel, they sent her to us at Domino's Pizza Group to go on some of our corporate level training courses, which start at the absolute basics of hospitality, greeting consumers, keeping the store clean, move on to cooking and delivery and the software and the systems that back all of that up. And she stepped her way up through assistant manager training and manager training. She was promoted to store manager very early. Typically, it takes two to three years minimum before an individual will be tapped up for a store manager role. But this young lady uh, was promoted within 18 months to manager. She was then recognized uh, across the UK as the so-called rookie manager of the year and won that award, which we were delighted uh, to uh, hand to her in front of a 1,000 of her peers. She was then picked up as international manager, uh, rookie manager of the year, um, versus every other country in the world. And it's just worth mentioning in passing, because I can't resist it, that of the 20 top stores in the world by sales, 18 are in the UK and Ireland. It is a seriously world-class business in the UK that you should be proud of. Um, Jen continued to, uh, to excel, and when she moved out of the new trainee rookie stage of her career, she became a manager in her own right. And in fact, a year later, was picked up as manager of the year in the UK as well. Fantastic. I'm delighted that two years later, Jen uh, continues to progress her career with us. She's now an area supervisor, which means that she's running six stores, I think, down on the south coast. Those six stores employ about 250 people, and she is in her own turn responsible for their training, development, recruitment, and so on. Um, and this brings to mind a, a little acronym that we use, uh, which is RETAIN, and you can see that on the right-hand side there, which we use within our HR team to help us think through what we are trying to do with our staff in the field. 
The R stands for recognise. Absolutely crucial as far as we're concerned to recognise the employees who show the right behaviours, who show the commitment and the enthusiasm. Then to encourage them to grow. And this is a point that's been touched on once or twice and I really want to hammer it home. When we hire someone to deliver pizza, just like when you, you hire someone to flip burgers or to stand on the door in, in the hotel or whatever it might be, we're bringing them into a potentially extremely exciting career path. And we encourage them in every possible way to work their way up that, that career path. We provide the opportunities and the training to help people move on. And because it's an extremely meritocratic environment where many of the key things that people do are measurable, it really helps us to be able to spot talent and to move people onwards and upwards. And we recognize and we reward that um, commitment by promoting them, paying them more, and so on. Here's my second case study, a young man called James Swift who operates down the M4 corridor. Uh, and you'll see him sitting there on a scooter but with a Ferrari in the background. And uh, the, the story here is quite wonderful, which is that James kind of dropped out of school round about GCSE stage a few years back. Uh, his parents were absolutely devastated when he did so. Um, and uh, his mother was absolutely desperate that he hadn't stayed on to do his A-levels and remained desperate for about three years until he drove up in his first Ferrari uh, that he had earned uh, through his career progression um, within a Domino's franchise. Let's just talk about the story of James for a minute. He joined us as a delivery driver, age 16, delivering pizza on a scooter. Um, he also demonstrated very high levels of passion, leadership and innovation um, the franchisee that he worked for was so impressed that that franchisee decided to fast track him and give him leadership opportunity, uh, opportunities very early on. And he found himself running a store in the Bath area within a couple of years of having started. Um, he was encouraged, he was actually lent money by his fellow franchisee um, so that he could buy his own first store and he got up and running. And within a few years, he, uh, in partnership with another guy, had actually built up an estate of nine stores. Uh, in the, uh, on the M4 corridor, as I say. By the way, nine of the most successful stores in the UK with very high turnover, sales, and growth. Uh, he, uh, in his own turn, employs um, many hundreds of employees himself. He's an inspiration to them. This guy is still in his late 20s, uh, and they can look at him and see what he's achieved. He races cars as a hobby, uh, and uh, hopefully not as a hobby. He's also come with us into Germany, where he's just about to open his second store, uh, the first store that James operates in Germany is the uh, record-setting store in Germany with the highest sales levels uh, of any of our new stores in the German business. And in Germany, he's hired 28 people so far, so he's creating employment again in a new environment. Um, the comment I put on the right, if you can't read, as a 16-year-old, you are not really sure where you want to go. Domino's helped me. Uh, with direction and inspiration. The entrepreneurial nature of the company has meant that the limit of what you can achieve is yours to decide. And that, I see a lot of heads nodding around the room because that applies to so many businesses in this room. That's a zoom in just on a couple of our people. Um, they, they live the values that we stand for and that so many of you stand for as well. We're extremely proud of them. We don't think that what we create is a humble career at all. Uh, we've got a large number of our 100 franchisees who started out as drivers. Many of them are multi-millionaires. Many of them employ thousands and thousands of people, and they pay a lot of tax. Um, tax has become a bit of a hot button. Um, we believe uh, that uh, if you take the tax that DPG, Domino's Pizza Group, pays at the center, and all the pa tax paid by our franchisees, and of course the VAT and the national insurance and all the rest of it, that we're contributing over 100 million in tax to the Exchequer each year. And that number continues to grow steadily uh, as our system grows. And you saw the growth curves earlier on. And in that context, uh, I guess I'm slightly disappointed um, when so many of us in this room contribute so much in terms of employment, employment growth and tax payments, not to see government representation in the room throughout the day um, that reflects the importance of the industry we all run. Uh, thank you very much for hosting us here today. It's a fantastic day, and uh, I look forward very much to seeing you all at lunch. <coughs>